Sean, I, I miss you, my friend. And the reason why I can definitely say that is because not only the fact that I've enjoyed all the interviews that we've done over the years, but also for the last couple of years, when I think of you, I think of summer. And the reason why I think of summer is because I think of Casa Loma. And when I think of Casa Loma, I think of Soul in the City, which yeah. you have hosted. And this has been the first year in a long time, my friend. I was not at Casa Loma. I was not at Soul in the City. I was not there to see you. I was not there to see all these great artists. I was not there to have that summer experience because of what was going on with COVID-19. My friend, I got to ask you, how have you been holding up this year? And uh, again, man, I, I feel bad. Like that experience is amazing and we, we missed out on it. How do you feel about all this? Yeah, it's been um, it's been an interesting year, I guess to say. Um, definitely, we've missed um, we the band and I have definitely missed being at Casa Loma and and doing all of that stuff, performing for you know all those people every single night, putting together the shows, uh, interacting with the, the the guest artists that would come up. Uh, yeah, we, we truly miss that, and I've I've truly been missing that. But, you know, um, to be honest with you, um, COVID has actually been a blessing somewhat in disguise because I actually had a, a vocal injury uh, that I had to actually get taken care of at the beginning of March, right before they shut down all the elective uh, surgeries. And so I actually got it done, and it has actually allowed me the time to recuperate properly and get my voice back to where it needs to be. Now, unfortunately, I'm still not performing because everything's still on lockdown. But had uh, had the pandemic not happened, um, I'm not sure if I would have been performing at Seoul in the city this year. So it, it's 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 been kind of like... You know, I'm, I'm sad that things happen this way and that the world, you know, is upside down. But it, on the flip side, I've actually had time to actually recuperate and get an album together. So we're, <laughs> we're definitely going to talk about that album. And I'm glad to hear about that. My apologies for interrupting. But like I said, I feel like I've got too many things I want to ask you about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but that that's good to hear. And it's great that you're able to show folks that even through these tough times there is um some good that could happen it's, a lot of people are refocusing they're looking back at themselves looking at you know uh clearing out their homes and things like that like there are things that you can look at to get through this but at the same time what are your thoughts when you turn on the tv or social media and been seeing these things throughout the year of um you know, COVID-19, um, Black Lives Matter, um, you know, racism being spoken in such a manner. Um, Karens and Kevins, these terms we've never heard of before <laughs> now are, you know, you know, as soon as you hear about it, um, the, uh, you know, people fighting about masks, not wearing masks, um, yep. Yep. you know, conspiracy theories. And then, of course, to me, which is probably the ultimate what's been going on in the U.S., and I have to yeah. use the name Donald Trump, and yeah. those battles going on down there. I mean, what do you, what do you think of all that? Uh, all that? I mean, so many people uh, don't know what to think, and also there are times, like I know for myself, I don't even want to turn the TV set on or look at social media or anything because I'm just like, how much more can I take of this? Yeah, it's, it's emotional overload, and that's what it's been for the last, you know, seven, eight months. Um you know, as if COVID wasn't bad enough, then you had, you know, the the George Floyds and 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 Breonna Taylors and and everything else, and the and the the, the unrest down down south, and you have this crazy guy in in the highest office in in the land in the United States, you know, um, pouring gas on a, an already open and you know crazy going fire. Um, it's just been an emotional roller coaster. And I can't even really say roller coaster because it just feels like it's been going down, down, down <laughs> for, for quite some time. And I feel like a lot of people have been feeling that, um, you know, at the beginning of uh, probably around March or April, it really did start to hit me a tiny bit. I've always felt like I've been like pretty emotionally strong, you know, 
uh, optimistic. But about, you know, March or April, it just really started to hit me with everything that was just coming through the pipes. And like you, I just didn't want to turn on the TV anymore. Like it was just, it was just overload, sensory overload. But um, what it has done, it is, it has opened up everybody's eyes to the, the truth that is really out there. And that is that racism exists. Um, and it is, it, it has not gone away and not only does it exist in the United States, but it exists here in this country as well. You know, this beautiful land that I, that I call my home, uh, we have our problems here as well. And so I feel like, you know, everybody's eyes are open now. Uh, now the hard work needs to happen, which is, um, more talking and more action to change the systemic racism that that is just clearly out there, but yet there are still people in power that are still denying that it's even there. So there's a lot of work to be done, but at least the talks have begun. At least the talks have begun. And if anything um, that I can say, you know, some good stuff that has happened in uh, in, in 2020, it's that these these talks have begun. And um, and I've you know on my Instagram. You know, I'm not a political person, but I, I definitely felt the need to, to get involved. And I was posting all kinds of stuff and, and, um, and trying to get my voice out there. Um, and, the, and it was very interesting to, it was very interesting to have, uh, the responses that mm. we get <laughs> on some of my posts, um, from people that, you know, were just Come on, say it. Out, out to lunch. We'll just say they were completely <laughs> out to lunch on on some of their viewpoints, you know. And it, but it's but it's very interesting to see because they're very convinced in that in their viewpoint. Like you can't you can't and and at some point you just have to step back and you have to say you know what you just got to let them be. You can't argue with those people because nothing is going to change. You're not going to change their their views, their mindset. Nothing. They really believe that the world is this way. And unfortunately, um, those people exist out there and you just have to focus on um, trying to change or educate the ones that you, that you can. And, and I think that's where I'm at at this point is just trying to have the talks with people that are reasonable um, and explain to them and educate them um, on on what the real world is like, as opposed to what they think has been going on in their head. Even in my own home, you know, I'm in an interracial uh, relationship, um, you know, and uh, I had to have that talk with her because she didn't fully understand everything that I was going through, the, everything that I was feeling. When I watched uh, Ahmaud Aubrey getting uh, run down and, and shot like an animal, I cried at the at the dinner table like i cried i was watching i actually watched it um as my uh, with my with my daughter like my daughter was beside me she's three years old she wasn't watching it she was watching something on on television cartoon and i had to leave the room and go outside and cry because it was that i was hurt i i was just beside myself and um and i had to explain to 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 my partner you know, everything that I was feeling because she, she didn't understand. Like she, and, and, and you, and you say to yourself, how can you not understand? Like this has been going on for, for ages, but people just really don't, you know, they just, they really, really don't completely understand what people of color go through on an everyday basis. And so it's been a lot of that, which just adds to the emotional roller coaster of the entire year. And, you know, but I'm staying positive. I feel like, we're we're moving in the right direction, and so that's all I can say. <laughs> I just want I just want to add in two things on that. Number one, um, do you were you surprised when you talked about social media? Mm-hmm. Were you surprised at? You said you heard you you read the comments and stuff like that. Did you mm-hmm. have the same experience as I had that when you saw some of the comments, they were people that you knew or you basically felt you knew people broke bread with and then suddenly see their views and you're thinking to yourself like myself was like what the hell what are you saying (laughs) well you know what i 
I actually, um, there was only one person that I knew that responded in like a really negative or not even so much negative, but just kind of like, Oh, there's nothing to see here. Like, I don't, I don't understand what you're, what you're so upset about. And funny enough, they, um, they erased their comment before I could even respond to it. It's like they, they, <laughs> it's like they knew it was coming. And cause I, I was about to like unleash, like I, I, that what they had said, I was just about to completely unleash on them. And then I went back and I couldn't find the comments anymore because they had actually erased it. Everybody else that made those comments, I had never even, I didn't even know they were following. Me. Like, I don't mm. even know how they, they saw what it was that I had that I had posted or that I had said, because I'd never, ever seen them before. I'd never seen them like anything. So it must've just been like a, a search or something or something popped up on the feed that they decided to respond to. But yeah, no. Um, but what I tell you what I did see Rudy or didn't see, and that opened my eyes. I noticed the people that weren't saying anything. Mm. That's what I noticed more than anything else. The people that, have power that are in power that are in places that should have been speaking up that said absolutely nothing I agree. and i remember that to this day and i will not forget that i i absolutely agree with that there were only few that i saw uh and that upset me too the other thing i want to ask you too is the tears that you talked about mm -hmm. were part of those tears also because you are as you mentioned before you're a parent now you have a daughter were those tears part of the worry of what your daughter is going to have to deal with in the future? Because you're going to have to have the talk with her at some point. Absolutely. Um, I don't, you know, it's, when I was, when the tears came, it was just a, it was just tears of, um, uh, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I was just so saddened by the world that, in this in 2020 that a man could be hunted down and shot to death in public and 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 the police just cover it up like nothing had happened and it it, it was a modern day lynching and i've i've never i see it on tv all the time you know people getting shot and killed but it, in real life and like you just you just don't see that and for me to watch that it was just so heartbreaking it was it was the most heartbreaking thing that I've ever seen, uh, probably, or at least in a really, really long time. And it just broke me. It was like I, I, I didn't even know what to say. And, of course, you know, that ex, it extends itself to, you know, my daughter who's three, who's going to grow up and, and people are going to, um, you know, say that she is black. Um, and so, yeah, you, you definitely worry about that for sure. But it just, you know, you watch scenes like that and it just brings back all the triggers because, you know, every day I go through that every day, whether it's whether it's like really, really hard racism or it's just overt, like going into a bank um, last year and, you know, um, going to uh, pay. <laughs> I was going to pay somebody, pay uh, management uh, their fee. Uh, that, that they deserve their commission. So I go in there and I give them a check and, uh, and, and they're questioning me. And when I, and when, then they ask me, well, what do you do? I'm like, Oh, I'm a singer. And you know, this is my manager. And they're like, Oh, you like, what did he say? He said, he said, he's like, uh, so, so you're paying your manager this much money. I said, yeah. And he went, wow. and I was just like, wow, you think I'm a drug dealer. Like, you really believe I'm a drug dealer right now, you know, doing laundering money or doing something. I couldn't, like, but it's every time. It's not just one time. Like, multiple times I go into the bank, I get asked that question all the time. And my girlfriend, who is white, she has never been asked that question. Never been asked where her home bank is, what she's doing there. Never, ever. It's it's blatant, man. It's blatant. Uh, well, you know, I could I could tell you stories too, man. We, I know. Oh, I know. You it's it's crazy, but somehow throughout all this, you have still been able to be creative, mm -hmm. 
bring love to the world and bring it through the love of music. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you pulled this off, <laughs> but man, you have new music out. Before we get even into what the album is called and what it's about, how the hell did you record this during COVID-19? Because as we speak, so many areas are in shutdown right now. Mm-hmm. March was shut. That was was deserted. You might as well see tumbleweed rolling yep. around on the streets. How yep. did you do this? Well, we had done uh, quite a bit of work writing um, a lot of the tracks uh, in 2019, and uh, there were still some some more tunes to be to be written. Um, and then, like I said, I had this surgery that was happening in March, so I couldn't I couldn't record anyway. And I had the surgery um and uh started to recuperate and then just started writing and i started doing uh you know virtual writing sessions basically and and flipping flipping um ideas back and forth um i i get very very involved in the production process um i'm not a producer myself i wouldn't say that but um i put together quite the sketch of a song in fact in every song on this album there's there's multiple stuff on there of stuff that I actually like played and we just decided to use it because it fit properly, even the sound. Um, and so, you know, I had an amazing, I worked with an amazing producer, uh, Murray Daigle, uh, who, who basically, you know, took my ideas to a whole other level. And we went, uh, we went in the studio when it was uh, safe, when they had opened up. And uh, we started recording, and basically, you know, we put together a 15-song album that is will be coming out um, summer of 2021, if all goes well. So, yeah. Okay, so when you were doing this, knowing that you just had surgery on your throat, yes, what were the what were the limitations, but also what did you end up realizing that you were able to conquer? Because it sounded like as things were going on every moment, things were getting stronger, or were they? Were there points where you were just like, maybe I shouldn't do this album? What was happening there? Yeah, you know, um, I didn't want to push myself too hard. Um, and so, you know, we started out with, you know, the first song wasn't too taxing vocally, um, but I knew that there was others that would be coming that would be, that would start to get taxing. And so uh, we just took it slowly and, you know, um, in the studio, I wouldn't say I was the as fast as I normally am, but uh, we were able to, to make it through. I mean, some songs were harder than others, but um, I was always conscious that, you know, I'm still recuperating and, and I'm, I'm still in that mode right now. Like I'm not 100% even now. Uh, but I don't have to do hours and hours and hours of performances every single day. Like I go into the studio, we spend, you know, a good eight to 10 hours and then I'm, I pretty much off, you know, for the rest of the, for the rest of the, for the rest of the week. And so that's how we kind of proceeded with things. Um, so there was never really any, I was never worried that we weren't going to finish it. Um, but you know, I'm happy that it's done now. Like literally we just wrapped up the last song last week and um and i'm happy that it's done so that now i can just kind of like get back into just like working out the vocal my vocals and getting it back to where 100 percent so that you know i'm good to go you know whenever they decide to open that things back up again which will hopefully be summertime i'm hoping you know who knows or maybe i'm just a dreamer but i'm hoping that there'll be some semblance of of normalcy that happens you know come july of next year. Crossing fingers on that. You have a single out right now though, don't you? I do. Yeah. We, uh, we put out a song called, uh, love will. And it's, uh, it's a throwback to like nineties, nineties house. It's a definitely a combination of like house music and R and B music. Um, and it's a nice, it's, it's a nice track. It's, it's all about love and relationships and, you know, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't, but you can hope that love will, Love will, will find a way and love will win.
Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a great track. Um, got a great remix from the year and uh, just, just dropped the video for that. Um, but I'm very, very excited about um, next year and the, and the singles that are coming up uh, because there's some, really there's some fire, man. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really excited. It's the best work that I've done to date, 100%. And it's all, I went back to my roots. I went back to where it all started from with, you know, in essence and, and like 90s R&D. I went right back there. And it's, and there are some tunes on there that I really think are going to resonate with people. The production is right. The, the vocal arrangements on these things are like, are unbelievable. Um, and so I'm really, really excited. And I'm working on some more visuals for, for all the, for all the singles. So yeah, it's it's I'm I'm excited about the project. I really wish that, you know, COVID wasn't here because I love performing this stuff and it would have been absolutely amazing to like just get out there and 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 start touring and doing it cuz this album is going to is is really really good, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so we'll just, you know, keep on releasing singles until we're able to until we're able to actually get out there in front of live people. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to the visuals too, because I've seen so many uh, artists who have been so creative because they only have limited limits to what they can do during Absolutely. COVID, and they yep. come up with some amazing things. Do we have a name of the album yet? Uh, Sav Boulevard. My daughter's name is, and and I came up with that name from you know uh, I've been working on this record for later my daughter is three so i've been working on this record since around 2017 to be honest wow. with you just like you know slowly putting songs together i actually recorded a bunch of it and then had to re-record it because it just wasn't good enough um, but the songs were good enough but the production and stuff just just needed to be reworked and so um, i've been working on this since 2017 when i found out my daughter was coming and we were going to name her savannah I just figured, you know what, this is a new street that I'm going to be walking down for the rest of my life. And so <laughs> this new album is, is dedicated not to her and just to, to everything that's happening. It's just like, yeah, so it's going to be called Sav Boulevard, Volume 1. There'll be more. Amazing. Amazing. Who knows? Maybe when Volume 2 rolls around, we may hear some vocals from her. Oh, well, yeah, you'd never know. You know, I, I, I see everyone doing that, and I would love to. And funny enough, she's actually, I got a piano downstairs, and she plunks away on it, and she loves to sing Frozen. <laughs> like, I, I've seen Frozen now, I don't know how many times, and let it go. <laughs> I tell you, man. <laughs> I, you know, you hear you hear parents talk about it, and and you just and you smile at them, and then you become a parent yourself, and you're like, oh, so this is this is what it's about when you have to watch the same cartoon movie every single day, and and then they just become addicted to the song, and then you just have the song in your head completely. I go to bed singing Frozen, so <laughs> I'm telling you, maybe I should do like a '90s R&B version of Frozen. Maybe that'll. Maybe that'll do it for me. <laughs> I was just thinking that you got to do it in the show at some point. What, what are the plans for the uh, the holidays for you and the family? You know what? Staying, staying put, staying put like everybody else. We are, um, we're here. Uh, you know, my parents. Um, I see them occasionally. Um, it's not warm outside anymore, so you know, our outside, you know. Um, Little gatherings aren't working so much anymore, but um, I still manage to see them, and they love to see their granddaughter. Um, but yeah, you know, it's gonna be it'll be quieter than it normally is for sure. But we got the tree up, we got the lights. I'm getting in the Christmas spirit now. I went and bought some Baileys for the for the eggnog, and you know what I mean. Like I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I got my room ready to go. So. Exactly. You know what I mean. I'm sure somebody is gonna you know, deliver a rum cake or a black cake to me, you know what I mean? As, mm -hmm. You know, as, uh, as every Jamaican understands. And, um, and yeah, we're just going to have a, a good time and ring in the new year and, um, and try and put 2020 behind us as quickly as possible. I would hope so. You know, it's so funny because I saw, I couldn't believe I saw this and I can't remember if it was on TV or if it was on online, but I saw a commercial and it was, the devil and he turned and he saw this woman who had on a shirt that said 2020 
and they looked at each other and oh, they, yeah, they kissed. <laughs> and yeah, it's matchmakers. And I was like, good Lord, has it gone to this? <laughs> hey man, I think that's a beautiful marketing. That was like it is. that was a beautiful piece of marketing right there. I mean, what, all you could do is smile at that. Like I laughed. I was just like, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a, <laughs> this is what 2020 truly is all about. So when you see something like that, and, and knowing that so many people are so now hyped because as you speak, 2020 is ending. We're going into 2021. They are. So praying that 2021 is going to be nothing like 2020. But we don't know anything can happen in 2021. Because we were saying that about 2019, going, "Oh Lord, let's get to 2020." Yeah, um, exactly. What What advice from what you've gone through and what you've learned about yourself and learned about life? What advice can you give folks out there to hopefully be able to hold on to that uh, to that momentum? And because you never know, it might change. You know, we may be going, "Oh Lord, please for 2022." What advice yeah. can you give to, to get through this, this tough time? You know what? You just gotta, you just gotta hold on. You just gotta, you gotta find the light somewhere um, in, in anything that's, that's happening. There's always light that's happening. Um, yeah. There's definitely always going to be dark times, but just try and hold on to the light. And I think one of the best recommendations that I can give people honestly, is to tune out the social media. Put your phone down, turn off the TV, and let yourself decompress for at least, you know, a couple hours every single day. And you hear my baby right now? <laughs> I, I'm hearing it. I love it. I love it. Like, I love it. See, that's hope. When I hear that in the background, to me, that's hope for the future. Oh, well, that's, well, that's just it. Like, friends, family, like, they're – we're still here. They're still around. So let's not pretend like, you know, the world has completely ended. It has not. And, and let's just enjoy the time that we have with the people that we love. And like I said, the best way to do that is to hop off your damn phone and get off TV and just give somebody a call and have some chats, you know, pick up a new hobby, get, start working out, get healthier. This is amazing time. I know this is not, not the greatest time for it and people are dying, but at the same time, this is an opportunity for us because life has slowed down, the world has slowed down. This is an opportunity for us to actually better ourselves in whatever way that you see that as, whether it's you want to do some meditation, whether it's you, know, you want to connect with your family or your friends a little bit more, whether that you want to get healthier, whether that you want to you know, educate yourself a little bit more, maybe take some free courses that are online. Whatever it is, there's some great, this is a great time to do that. And, you know, if you can just dive into stuff like that, time will fly by and hopefully things are going to get better in the meantime. They're going to figure this thing out and uh, we can get things back to normal. That's my best advice. Amen to that. My friend, thank you so much for this interview. Thanks for making the time to speak with me and give me your views on the world today. Thank you, as I thank so many artists in 2020 for the music, because you folks could have just said, you know what, I got other things I need to deal with, but you let your creativity flow, creativity flow throughout this tough time, and you've given us hope through music. So speaking from everybody else out there, thank you so much for that. But man, just thank you for the friendship, and just thank you for all the interviews uh, that we've done over the years. Thank you, thank oh, you, thank you. For that. You're, I've, I will. I think I say this at every single interview, but I mean it. Like you have been a supporter of me from time, and um, and I, I truly appreciate your your allyship, your friendship. Like I, I just, I, I truly love you as a person, man. And it's just like, um, I, I can't wait to see you in person, give you a big hug. I just want to hug everybody that I, you know, that I, that I love. And once again, as opposed to doing the whole fist bump or even the elbow bump at this point, mm. what everyone does now. Like, I just want to give everybody a hug, man, that I truly care about. And uh, you will get a big one from me, my friend. So look out for that. <laughs> I am looking forward to that. Love you too, but I'm hoping that we do the hug at Castle Loma, yes. where it's like, okay, I got my seat at the table, I'm yep. getting some nice food, the sun is out, I'm yep. hearing great music, and of course, you know what happens at the end of your show, 
all these women are jumping up and down. How? Here's the thing I, I don't get. How not nobody has thrown a penny at you yet? I am surprised. But you know, at some point in time, somebody's going to take the draws off and throw them. At you. you know that, right? I'm I'm waiting. I, I would I would love for that to happen. Hopefully, it's a pair of clean draws. That's all I'm yeah. asking for. But it's all good. Whatever. I'll take hey, it. No, I want to say right now, it's going to be sweaty because you know those people are going to be bouncing up and down dancing. So just be prepared for that. But um, <laughs> crossing figures, man. Anyway, like I said, big love to you. All the best. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and. Yeah, we'll definitely talk in 2021 across fingers. It's going to be a person. Big love to you. Awesome, man. Thanks so much, Rudy, and uh, uh, happy holidays to you as well. Take care. Be good. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. Take care.